Is anyone else tired of everything becoming a subscription? Subscriptions for entertainment, software, online courses, cloud storage space, heated seats for cars. Anyways, I remember back in the day when you could just buy stuff and it was yours. However, now everything is X amount per month. Very few things these days is a one-time payment. Now, for business that works great because you have a constant inflow of revenue, but for the consumer, it's a real pain because every payday is fraught with devastation. When you finally get your paycheck and then most of it is gone due to all the different services you are subscribed to, whether by choice or by necessity. I'm sure some of you are wondering if there is a way to not have so many subscriptions that way you can have more money in your pocket rather than these giant companies that keep raising their prices to melt the consumer. So join me while I show you how to unsubscribe your life. Alrighty folks, let's look at all the different subscriptions that some people have and find some alternatives. Let's start with the big one, entertainment. I'm sure loads of you have one, if not many movie streaming service subscriptions ranging from Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Paramount Plus, Disney Plus, Apple TV, HBO, or Max Plus, or whatever it's called now, and so many others. Now, depending on how you watch your movies or TV shows, it will affect how you will change your way of watching them. If you use a smart TV and have it connected to the internet and have all of your streaming subscriptions through the apps on your TV, then you have two options. Your first option is what I said a couple videos ago about having physical media rather than relying on streaming services. If you want to hear my arguments on that, go check that video out. Again, option one is to simply buy the physical media of your favorite movies and TV shows and have them on hand to watch whenever you want and not having to pay monthly to own them. It does get expensive if you are buying movies all the time and they do take up space if you happen to have a large enough collection. However, paying for them once and always having them available is the far more affordable option. Option two is to use pirate websites. Arr, yarr, maybe. I'm not gonna suggest any in this video due to some of them being taken down recently because they got found out by the wrong people. But who knows, maybe someone will post a comment and give a short list of websites where you can view any movie or TV show you want completely for free. Now, if you want to watch stuff on pirated websites on your big TV in your living room, I would recommend using a computer. Like me, for example, I have a small computer in my living room that I call my entertainment computer, which has all my retro game emula emulators and is hooked up to my TV. I use it with this wireless Logitech keyboard and touchpad, so I can sit on the couch and operate it without any wires or even having to get up. Now, I know I've said several times in the past videos that this computer is running Linux, and for a very good reason. Some of the pirate sites that you may look up if you're just going at it trial and error like, trying to find your favorite movie, may have some viruses or malware attached to them. However, most malware and viruses are only written for Windows-based computers, so they don't even affect Linux systems. Believe me folks, I thought this through. I also use the Brave browser, which blocks all telemetry data, pop-ups, and ads on all pages you go to, especially when going to YouTube. On that computer, I only use the Brave browser. It blocks all the ads, and also if you use the sponsor block extension, you don't have to sit through those annoying sponsor reads for those bigger channels. Now, speaking of YouTube, all of you YouTube premium plebs who pay for that nonsense can stop right now and use YouTube Revanced. However, it's only available on Android, so for all of you Apple users, well... Now, let's move on to software as a service. For all of you creative folks out there who like to either create videos like me or like to create art, manipulate photos, or whatever you like, I'm sure most of you might be using the Adobe Creative Suite. While it is kind of the industry standard for a lot of people and large productions like films and TV, to music, to animators, and many others, it does come with a hefty price tag. Hefty, hefty, hefty. Now, if you are willing to change over to a completely different ecosystem and learn an entirely new program, there are free or one-time fee software out there that aren't subscription-based. For you video editors out there who use Premiere like I do, there are a few options for you that are free or cheaper. One big example is one that I talked about a few videos ago is DaVinci Resolve by Blackmagic Design. It has a completely free version that most people use and see no need to fully upgrade to the studio version, which is only $295 for life. No subscription. 
Many people swear by it, saying it's much better for their workflow and is much more versatile with its color editing capabilities. It is quite a robust system, and many popular Hollywood movies were created in it. For you more casual editors, you could use the free version of DaVinci, or you could use Blender. Blender is a completely free animation and compositing software with a video editor ability tacked onto the side. It can edit videos pretty well. It is kind of slow though, and you have to create proxies for your clips to be able to edit them fully without the playback being really choppy and unwatchable. Blender was the program that I cut my teeth on while I was learning to edit videos. If you go back to like the first 15 videos I made on this channel, they were all made in Blender. There's also Sony Vegas. However, I'm not sure how they work because they have a buy price and also a subscription price. So maybe they're catering to both groups of people that either prefer to buy things and those that prefer subscriptions, if there are any. If anyone is more familiar with Vegas Pro and their creative suite, please let us know how it works in the comments. Now, for you Photoshop and Lightroom and Illustrator folks, there's Affinity, who has a designer, a photo, and publisher. They, have, they also have a one-time fee for their software and even a six-month free trial to test out the software. And again, no subscription. They make a big point about that on their website. And for you After Effects wizards, you also have DaVinci Resolve's Fusion, which is built into the software. And Blender as well. For you musical types, you can use programs like Audacity or GarageBand for the Mac users. Unfortunately, there aren't many free or cheaper alternatives to Audition. Unless you already have something like Apple's Logic Pro, but again, that's only for Mac users. Or, if you just don't want to switch from the Adobe suite and want to stick with the familiar software, I completely understand. There is a way around their hefty price tag. Hefty, hefty, hefty. There is this thing called GenP. That's all I'm going to say. Look up Adobe GenP and do with that knowledge as you see fit. Now, even all creative people need simple office type software to manage basic computing such as a document writer, a spreadsheet program, a slideshow program, and all the other office type programs that everyone uses on a daily basis. Now, since Microsoft has transitioned their office software suite to a subscription model, rather than it coming already included in Windows, like it did back in the Windows 7 and 8 era, now everything is a subscription. However, there are free solutions. Check out LibreOffice. It has all the same programs, such as a document writer, spreadsheet program, slideshow, and more. It has all the same functions as Microsoft Office, and basically the same layout. It was created and is ran by the open source community that enjoys creating software to share with other people, rather than keeping everything behind a paywall. There's also OpenOffice, made by Apache, which has the same basic functions and look as LibreOffice. They are completely free, and they work on any operating system. Just a simple download, and it's yours. Now, I'm sure there will be some people who come at me and say, you're stealing from those big companies and costing them so much more money. Well, for one, I'm not the one who created these alternatives. I'm just simply using them. In this day and age, with everything being so expensive, you have to find areas where you can cut costs and not spend if not needed. If your older folks remember back when Adobe had discs for each of their programs that you could buy at the store like Best Buy or Circuit City or even Walmart and use it until an updated version came out and then you go and get that one. Or you could just simply stay with the one that you had until they decided to move fully over to a subscription model and charge through the nose for it. Same thing with Microsoft. Back in the days of Windows 8 and 7 and lower versions, you just had Microsoft Office. It came with the operating system if you bought a computer at the store. And you could use it all you wanted with no extra cost. Now, they parse out every single part of their operating system to get more and more money out of you, including having most of their stuff in the cloud where you can just download it. But then again, you don't own it. You just downloaded it. They could just as easily take it back from you and make you pay even more money to continue using it. I don't work that way, and I don't pay anyone who does. So that's why and how I've unsubscribed my life. I hope you are able to do the same. Now, if you guys have any suggestions for anything else we all could unsubscribe from and find cheaper or free alternatives for, please share it with all of us in the comments. Until next time, folks, if you have any further questions, please let me know.